Welcome to part 7 of this video series. Today we're going to be discussing children on board. Many people have different views on how to bring up children aboard a boat. It's always interesting to hear and discuss from family to family the experiences and challenges of having children aboard a boat. I have known families who have had young babies aboard to older teenagers. Admittedly, most people who live aboard full-time with children, especially older children, have larger boats. Having said that, however, I have met a few who have managed to do it in very small boats, even as small as a 20-foot flicka. Now, there's lots of different family types out there, from large families to a single parent, each with their own wants and needs. So for today, I'll just focus on the children themselves, and I'll start with babies and go all the way up to older teenagers. So, first I want to discuss babies. Babies are probably the simplest to have on a boat. For the most part, it's the same as in a house. You need a crib, a place to change the baby, etc. Cribs are simple. A lot of people just use lee cloths on a settee. This is fine for really young babies, but the barriers are not high enough for babies who are becoming more mobile. Now, I've seen people just take regular wood cribs and cut the legs off and screw them down to a side settee. If you're on a boat where you do not sleep in the V-berth, you can always just put a small removable netting over the entrance. I should mention, if you use netting, make sure the holes are small enough so they can't put their little hands and feet through it and get hung up. One other idea I'm not particularly fond of is I heard of one couple who just used padding and blankets to make the floor area into a crib. I dislike this for so many reasons, including waking up in the middle of the night and stepping on the baby. And it's always in the way. That might work as a playpen, but I wouldn't recommend it as a crib. As for a place to change the baby, any really solid surface will work, but just remember to at least have some support to stop the baby from rolling off if you get hit by a surprise wave. Toddlers are basically the same as babies as far as sleeping goes. They basically just need a secure place to sleep where they can't escape from. Make sure your boat is secured so they don't try to sneak out while you're sleeping. Unfortunately, boats have a tendency to have lots of steps and corners, so even after you've baby-proofed your boat, placed all the soft bumpers and locked all the cabinets, you still have to be extremely diligent. Nets surrounding your boat's lifelines on the outside will not only help keep your children aboard, but also their toys. The other side effect of having netting all around the outside of your boat, it lets other boaters who have kids know that you do too. Boaters who have children aboard usually end up staying and traveling in groups. Having other family boaters around can really be helpful, especially for information, babysitters, or playdates. I should also mention there are numerous websites that can help live aboard families find and communicate with each other, either for help or socializing purposes. Socializing is very important to children, and if you travel with other children, this makes this much easier to accomplish. I should mention, because children who are raised aboard spend a lot more time with adults, and they have a lot more responsibilities other than just cleaning their room, for example from line handling to helping with docking, it's been my personal experience that they have a tendency to mature faster. As far as toys go, for the most part, it's the same on the boat as it is on land, except that size and storage becomes a major issue. And make sure all your friends and relatives understand this. Nothing worse than grandma buying your daughter a Barbie dream house for her birthday and you have to take it away, breaking her heart because you have nowhere to store it. Try to look at the entertainment value compared to the size before purchasing any toys. Now stuffed toys are important to any childhood, but you have to remember mold and mildew happens very easily on a boat. Try to store them someplace where air can easily move around them, like in a hanging net. Always watch them carefully for any growth. Once mold and mildew starts, it grows really easily, and children put these in their mouths. These days, electronics have become a key part of children's toys. It's always a good idea to just let them use them inside the cabin. Electronics can be expensive, and kids move quick. One fast throw and splash, it's gone. A good idea for storage of electronics is to store them either in a plastic box with a damp rid, or in a large freezer bag with some silicon packs. Okay, here we go. Teenagers. Teenagers will either love the idea of being a liveaboard or absolutely hate it. If you currently live in a house and you tell them you're moving onto a boat and sailing away forever, they may resent you for taking them away from their school, friends, and surroundings. If you plan on staying at a local marina where they can still go to the same school every day, plus you're able to give them their own space aboard the boat, you will have a much easier time convincing them. If you do plan on traveling, then give them a time frame. For example, say something like, we are sailing away for a year, and you will be back after that to see your friends. Remind them that communications and social media is improving constantly, so they can still talk to their friends. Teenagers require a certain amount of normalcy. They want to be just like their friends. The more normalcy you can give them, the better. Younger teenagers are usually easier to convince than older ones. 
They see it more as an adventure they can tell their friends about. Older teenagers are thinking about their girlfriends and boyfriends, and traveling on a boat makes that virtually impossible. Having said all that, living aboard and traveling can give them an experience they will always carry with them. If you plan on traveling with school-aged children, then seriously put some thought into what you plan on doing as far as education goes. Are you going to take them out of school for a period where they'll have to make up that time when they get back, or are you going to homeschool them? Some provinces states won't let you take them out of school for extended periods, and each province state has its own rules regarding homeschooling. But more and more places are becoming more open to homeschooling. Plus, technology is making it much simpler to do so. During COVID, a lot of parents were introduced to what is actually involved in homeschooling, and some found they liked it, and others found, to their surprise, they're just not cut out for it. Make absolutely sure you put a lot of thought and research into whether or not this is right for you. Creating a personal space for a child is very important. It doesn't have to be a full stateroom, but something with a little bit of privacy. This, of course, is going to be very difficult on a small boat, but it can be as simple as enclosing a quarter berth. Most teenagers today don't need a lot of space, just enough space for their clothing, etc. Truth be told, most are fine staring at their personal electronics all day. I'm not saying this is healthy, but it is a reality. Most teens, from my experience, when they travel, actually spend less time hiding in the room and more time out and about seeing new sites. One thing I think would be very important with today's teens would be the best data package you can either find or afford for them. Rules are very important on board, even more so than on land, not only for safety reasons, but so you don't annoy each other and drive each other crazy while living in a small space. Okay, so, even though having a child in a small boat is challenging, it can be a very worthwhile endeavor. Living in a small space with your children can bring a family really close together and make memories that'll last a lifetime. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos.